Father, we come before you this morning recognizing that for the one who has trusted in Christ as their Savior and the Lord, it is well with their soul. It is well presently, it will be well forevermore. And it is well because of your Son, Jesus Christ, and what he has done for those who would put their trust in him. And I pray that as we remember him this morning, you would grant us your grace to do it well. Lord God, give us eyes to see your words to us and their meaning in the message of Scripture. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, this morning for our time around the Lord's table, we're going to be taking a look at a passage in which Jesus demonstrates his commitment to being the propitious sacrifice for the sin of all of those who would put their trust in him. So if you have your Bibles with you, will you join with me by opening them to Matthew chapter 27? We're going to be looking at verses 33 and 34 today. And if you don't have a Bible, we encourage you to obtain one as quickly as you can so that you can read God's word for yourself on a daily basis. The setting here is that Jesus is at the cross. He's before the cross and he is about to be crucified. What's very important as we consider this setting is that we understand the condition of Jesus' body. And that will help us understand his commitment to be the propitiation for the sin of all of those who would put their trust in him. So let's back up to verse 26 and observe some things that are true about Jesus' body. Jesus has been decreed by Pilate to be crucified and Pilate released Jesus to be scourged. We see that at the end of verse 26. It's very important that we understand what is taking place in the scourging process. The scourging process was a process in which Jesus himself was going to be whipped. And he was going to be whipped with a implement or a tool that was designed to bring about torture on the one being whipped. It was usually a rod with several straps of leather attached to it. And at the end of those straps of leather were sharp objects embedded in that leather, usually nails or something similar to that. And when the subject was struck with that whip, the nails entered into the skin and the flesh of that person. And when the, the whip was pulled away from them, their flesh would tear. And Jesus was whipped again and again and again. His flesh was torn open and his body was bleeding profusely. So not only was he in agony physically, but he was experiencing a significant, substantial loss of blood. And for that, Jesus was in a very weak condition. But as we take a look at verses 27 through 32, we can see something else that took place that Jesus endured. And that was done at the hands of the Roman soldiers. We see that they took Jesus into the praetorium and they stripped him naked of all of his clothing and they put a, a purple robe upon him. And then they weaved a crown of thorns together and put it on his head and they put a reed in his right hand and they bowed down and they mockingly worshiped him. They feigned worship to him and they spat upon him and they insulted him. And then they took the reed out of his hand and they beat him over the head with it. It's important to notice that the crown of thorns that they weaved together was already on his head at this time. So they were pounding the crown of thorns into his skull and blood came running down his face. That's the condition Jesus was in as he was standing before the cross. So as we read our passage today, verses 33 and 34, I want us to be thinking about the condition in which Jesus was and be thinking about what any other man would be wishing for his own physical body and relief from the prospect of the crucifixion in front of him. So let's read together. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall. And after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. They're at the place of the skull, Golgotha, where they're going to crucify Jesus. And the beginning of verse 34 tells us that they offer something to Jesus. It's a wine to drink mixed with gall. This was a sour wine that contained an additive in it. And the effect of that additive was to inhibit the ability and to impair the ability of the subject from understanding and experiencing what was taking place on the cross at the crucifixion. Jesus understood that his purpose in this process was to be the propitiation for the sin of all of those who would put their trust in him. 
That means he understood that it was his role, it was his task to experience firsthand in a very sensory, tactile, real way the pain and the suffering that those who would put their trust in him would otherwise experience forever in a lake of fire. So Jesus knew that he needed nothing, he could have nothing that would impair his ability to contend with the Father's judgment against all of those for whom he was dying. Isn't that loving and kind of Jesus? That is so loving and kind. The believer can take encouragement from that because we know that Jesus suffered in our place knowing that, that we will never suffer for our sin. So we've been released from the penalty of our sin because of Christ's willingness to endure firsthand with all of his faculties the Father's judgment against us for our sin. That is good news for the believer today. Praise God for that. If you're here today worshiping with us this morning, we're so thankful that you're here. For those of us who know Christ as their Savior and Lord, I encourage you just to take a moment to think of Christ and his love for us, that he would be committed to enduring the Father's wrath with all of his abilities so that we would never have to do that ourselves. Praise God for that.